Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 7, continuation of the Ezekiel commentary series. Let me tell you something. When I read this stuff, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the uh, what they call the major prophets, major in size, not necessarily major in importance. Well, they are major in importance, but uh, as opposed or contrasted to the minor prophets, which are just merely small in size. But as I read this, it's like reading the modern day news in the United States. I do read some international news and it's been a long time since I've been to Europe. Uh, last time I was at, in Europe was in the mid 70s. I know for a fact that Germany had a red light district. Yeah, the girls would sit in the windows when they're skimpy whatever and uh, you could go window shopping. Say, mm, I want that one. Pay the fee and um, yeah. Of course, I never did that then. But um, yeah. I could have if I wanted to. And you can go to Amsterdam and smoke hash. Let me tell you something. That hash in Europe, it's, uh, oof. that's some potent stuff. Let me tell you what. Yeah, I know all about it. Or I used to. Uh, one, two, or three puffs on hash is like smoking half a bag of weed. Seriously. It's whoosh. so that's the people thing. People are stoned out of their mind. Uh, everything that God hates, Europe and America are doing. Absolutely, it's unbelievable. You know, in the fifties. You know, certain groups of people were still in the closet, if you catch my drift. They didn't get married. Read Romans 1 if you don't know what I'm talking about. And uh, people still had respect for each other, but that's not true anymore. So... All I know is I read these books and it's like reading Revelation. There's not a lot of difference. There's a guy named Werner, I think his name Keller, The Bible is History. Well, I'll tell you what, that is an excellent book. I don't remember what edition it is. I've lost my library collection two or three times. But uh, one thing I remembered was they were digging around the Dead Sea. And they found a layer of glass in the sand. And, you know, you're talking like melted glass. Molten glass. Now, what is glass? Glass is silica. Crystallized silica. What's sand? Silica. And to turn sand, to melt sand into glass, requires a huge amount of heat. Matter of fact, you cannot do it without a enclosed area to concentrate the heat and air. And I mean concentrated air, like a bellows, uh, you know, like a fan, like a blacksmith would use. If you don't know what a bellows is, it's uh, 
It's like an air pump. From what I understand, it's absolutely impossible to take a wood or coal type fire, build it on a surface, and melt sand into glass. Impossible. Doesn't get hot enough to do it. And yet there it was. There was a layer of molten glass by the desert, by the Dead Sea. Some people theorize that Sodom and Gomorrah were by the Dead Sea. Well, guess when they started seeing glass in a desert? Well, they didn't see it until uh, they started the atomic testing during World War II, the Manhattan Project. Uh, what did the tr they called it the Trinity or whatever? I think it was in was it Nevada Desert or New Mexico? I forget. I it was out in the middle of the desert, and after they exploded the atomic bombs, they started finding the glass modules nodes or whatever little pieces of you know layers of glass in the sand where the sand had crystallized into you know melt the sand melted into glass which is crystal you know and what does the bible say about uh, sodom and gomorrah well god rained fire and brimstone on them and i think it's in the book of I'm not sure if it's Peter or Jude, but it says that Sodom and Gomorrah was to be an example, an ensample unto the wicked. But they found this glass by the Dead Sea, a layer of it. And it just didn't, you know, people just didn't build a fire out in the desert and the, the sand turns into glass. That don't happen. So where did that glass come from? You know, they used to laugh at the Hittite Empire. Oh, that never existed. And then they found it in the desert. You know, let me tell you something. The Bible is history. It was written in the 50s. Um, I would get the... Uh, try to get the first edition or the second. Uh, you know, the modern stuff, they always ruin everything i think it's warner keller or heller or something like that the bible is history check it out it's it's really interesting ezekiel 7 verse 1 moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying also thou son of man thus saith the lord god unto the land of israel an end the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Sounds like America, doesn't it? You know, there's a church of Satan. It was founded on June 6, 1966. Six month, six day, 60, year 66. Yeah. They have chaplains in the jails. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh, hey, uh, how would you like to be damned forever to hell? Uh, just be yourself. You know, that's their gospel. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. In other words, do whatever you want to do. Did you ever hear Billy Goat Graham uh, preach against that? No, uh-uh. Absolutely not. We tolerate every kind of evil there is. Verse 4. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, an evil 
and only evil. Behold, is come, and end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to all thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod is blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath, wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. I guess because they're all dead. They blow the trumpet to gather the army together, but there's nobody alive. Verse 15. The sword is without, and the pestilence, and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. But they that, but they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth. Now, if you don't know what sackcloth is, it's a very rough garment. It's what you wore when you were in mourning and repentance. You are not wearing your nice soft silk shirts or gowns or whatever. You're wearing rough clothing that's extremely uncomfortable. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Why would you carry around silver to weigh you down if it has no value? You know, that's basically what this is saying. And their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. See, they wanted to get gold and silver. That was the stumbling block. You know, when you're walking down 
a street at night and you trip over something, that's a stumbling block. Gold and silver was the stumbling block. Verse 20. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of the abominations and of their detestable things thereon, therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. See, they were worshiping images and idols. Probably not much different than today. I mean, look at the Catholic Church. You know, they take a, a statue of a woman with child, and then they call it Mary, and they bow down to it. I mean, really. Think about it. It's not that much different today. You know, just because you call a statue Mary doesn't make it so. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that you're supposed to pray to Mary. I mean, she's a blessed woman and everything. The Bible calls her blessed. But, uh, you know, nowhere does the Bible say to pray to her. Supposed to ask in Jesus' name. I mean, come on. Have things really changed in the thousands of years since these words were written? No. Really hasn't. But they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. Verse 21. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robber shall enter into it and defile it. God's going to turn his face away from his people, and God's holy temple is going to be polluted by the heathen, the robbers, and they're going to defile it. And God's going to let them do it. Verse 23, make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Uh, sounds like the United States. Do you know Chicago, just the city of Chicago, has an average of two murders a day? You know, they're, they're, uh, you look in the 50s, there was a time when um, the entire United States had less murders than Chicago, one city. Chicago's not even the largest city in the U.S. It's third. You got L.A., New York, and then Chicago. And people say, well, yeah, Chaplain Bob, you know, but there was less people living in the United States in the 50s, and this, you know. Well, yeah, that's true, but, uh, you know, uh, murder was a very rare thing in the U.S. in the 50s. Very rare. I mean, you know, in the 20s when the you had the, uh, the mafia gangs fighting each other over territory, you know, the, the, you know, they were killing each other. But now it's just you know, anything goes. Miami won murder capital one year in the 70s, late, mid to late 70s, 76, 77, 78, 79, somewhere around there. I remember that. We won murder capital of the year. We're number one. Yeah, it was drugs. It was drugs. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, my best friend's house, uh, at the end of his block, there was a family, I think it was two or three people were murdered in a house. Just, I don't know, maybe four or five houses away, six houses away, something like that. End of the block. They lived in the middle of the block, and at the end of the block, uh, two or three people were murdered. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. 
Amazing. Verse 23, make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence. Verse 24, wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen. Huh. Can I make a modern application to this? Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Uh, do we have the worst of the heathen living in the United States? I don't know. Some would argue yes. Verse 25. Destruction cometh. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace and there shall be none. You could also say, destruction cometh, and they're looking for the pre-trib rapture, but it ain't going to happen. That's the uh, modern Bob translation. Verse 26. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The law shall perish from the priest. I guess the priest isn't going to be teaching the law. Verse 27. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way and according to their deserts. Will I judge them? And they shall know that I am the Lord. Boy, that's some strong stuff. You know, people, let me tell you something. Solomon said, There's nothing new under the sun. America today is just like Jerusalem of old. And uh, from what I understand, England and the European Union, about the same. No different. You know, I uh, in Frankfurt, which was a major city in Germany, major city, large, I used to go out, uh, you know, one, two o'clock at night um, when I was off and we'd go out and hit the bars and have some German beer and uh, I never felt unsafe. Not then. I hear all that's changed. But, uh, you know, I, there's places now I just do not feel safe. Absolutely do not feel safe. I'm always... Uh, very cognizant of my surroundings now. There's so much crime now, it's unbelievable. You know, uh, the local news doesn't even report 90% of the crime. Don't even report it. It's unbelievable. So, judgment's coming, people. Repent, Jesus said many times. John the Baptist taught repentance. Jesus taught repentance. The apostles taught repentance. And Bob tells you that they teach repentance. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. All right, well, that's the end of this Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. To God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.